Mom, Dad, I humbly suggest you save some money and shop Amazon for back to school. It's for my growth, meaning my body's growing at an alarming rate. And clothes you buy me this year will be very small very soon. Plus, the clothes I love today will be out of style tomorrow. But at least your wallet doesn't have to be my fashion victim if you shop low prices for school at Amazon. Hopefully this is helpful. Amazon. Spend less, smile more. It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. This episode originally released June 20th, 2019. Hello there and welcome to Bells in the Bat Free, episode number 223. I'm your genial host, John Bell. We have some guests line up today and here is our first. Please tell us your name, sir. Bob Abirnathai. Really? Yes. Bob Abirnathai. Here's my card. All right. Um, this says Bob Abernathy. I say Birnathai. If you say so. I have a very unusual name. Yes, I noticed that. Bob Bob. It's spelled the same going forward and backward. So your name is a palindrome. No, it's a beernify. Bob a beernify. Right. You're not paying attention. And what business are you in? I'm with the FCC. The Federal Communications Commission? If you say so, that sounds about right. And you've come here to talk about your job? No, I'm here on official business. I'm investigating your show. Investigating my show? Yes, um, bats in the belfry. That's bells in the bat for you. That doesn't make sense. Well, you, you see, it's kind of a play on words because uh, I'm John Bell, uh, and instead of are you ba- telling me you have bats here? What? No, a bat infestation is a serious problem. I don't have bats, and what is it you came to see me about in the first place? You have recently joined uh, an organization of other um, broadcasters. Well, yeah, but we're not really broadcasters. We're more like the mutt. You all Audi one twerk. What? That's what it says on your website. It's the mutt you all Audi one twerk. No, no, that's the mutual audio network. So that's what you say, huh? No, that's what we are, the mutual audio network. I think you just put the emphasis on the wrong syllables. How's that? That's kind of a joke. That's, that's what we do here. I need to look at your records. Uh, We don't have any records. We don't play any music here. Your public records. Public records? All broadcast entities are required to keep public records of your public service. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, we're not a broadcasting entity. We're not a radio station or anything. We, 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 We podcast. You don't have any idea what I'm talking about, do you? So you have no public records? No. Could I see your license? We don't have a, a license. See, we're podcasters. We don't need... Fine, fine, fine. Oh, well, I'm glad you see it my way. And that fine could run into several thousand dollars. What? You need to get a broadcast license. We don't broadcast. And you need to start serving the public in your area. What's my area? You can hear me anywhere in the world. And people do that. No, but they could. I'm writing up a citation. You need to appear before the Federal Communications Commission board on this date. Uh, But we don't broadcast. Please don't shout at a federal public servant. But we don't broadcast. That's better. Here's your citation. We'll see you soon. Goodbye, Mr. Batley. That's Mr. Batfrey. I mean, Mr. Belfry. I mean... I call an exterminator for those bats. Well, that's a fine how do you do. How do you do? Now, who are you? I'm your next guest. Here's my card. All right. Um, hello, Mr. Abernathy. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's not my card. That was given to me by the gentleman who just left. Oh, I was kind of wondering. And it's pronounced a beer in the thigh. I think. So, do you have your card? I don't need my card. I know who I am. But I don't know who you are. It's right there on the card. This isn't your card. Oh, if you lost it, here's another one. No, I didn't. <sighs> Okay, uh, your name is Mr. Yards? No, that's who I work for. My name is Under That. Hello, Mr. Under That. No, my name is Under That logo that says Yards. There's a phone number under that. No, my name should be Under That. Well, unless your name is 6177... Let me see that card. Oh, dear, they left my name off. I specifically told them to put my name on the card. Okay, okay, what should I call you? Well, you can call me on the number that's on the card because that... Your name. What is your name? Oh, Riley. Hello, Mr. Riley. That's not my name. What? You weren't listening. But I... My name is O'Reilly. Oh, O'Reilly. No, just one O, not two O's. That would be O'Reilly. Mr. O'Reilly, why are you here? I 
represent yards. Whose yards? Your yards if you want. See, yards stands for your automatic response defense system. I see. No, Y-A-R-D-S. Of course. You seem to be having trouble concentrating, Mr. Batfree. Bell. Yes, we have bells and buzzers and sirens and all kinds of alarms for your home. Why are you here? I've come to demonstrate our newest home security system. You see this little device here? It looks like a paper plate. It is a paper plate. The device is sitting on the paper plate. See? That looks like a paper plate, too. Exactly. This device is very small and very thin. You place these all over your yard and inside your house. All righty. And if an intruder steps on it, it makes a loud, irritating noise. Kind of like your voice. Alerting you that you have an intruder. Okay, I'm following you. Please don't. That's kind of creepy. I'm sorry. I'll just sit right here. If the intruder continues intruding, he'll step on another one because you have them all over the place. It'll make another loud noise. Noise. So I won't think the first one was just a false alarm. No, and so you'll know the first one wasn't a false alarm. I stand corrected. Actually, you're sitting. Of course. Anyway, if the intruder steps on another one, there's another noise, and another one, there's another noise. But the fifth one they step on? Yes? They get an electric shock. Really? Oh, yes. They're all battery-powered, and they communicate via green tooth. Bluetooth? No, green tooth. Ours is like Bluetooth, but it doesn't harm the planet. Are you saying Bluetooth harms the planet? No, that would be like... Make your own decision. Well, this sounds like it would be an an effective security device. Oh, that's our slogan. Really? Yeah, look at my brochure here, see? Well, this sounds like it would be an effective security device. Just like I said it. I've taken the liberty of putting a whole bunch of these all over the floor here in your basement office thing. Really? Yes! Try them out for a few days, and I'll come back and get your opinion on it. All right, all right. I, I guess that'd be fine. I'll right, way out. I'll step on one so you can hear what it sounds like. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, that's marvelous. Thank you for uh, dropping by. All righty, let's get back to whatever it was I was planning to do for this episode. Let me check my notes. I think, uh, okay, I had decided to... What, what just happened? Oh, uh, all the lights just went out. Uh, what's going on? Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, I think I've gone blind. Call an ambulance. Brad, don't panic. I think it's just a power failure. You're just saying that to calm me down. If I was, it isn't working. Let me just turn on the flashlight on my phone. It, I left my phone in my office on the charger. Arnie! It isn't my fault, Mr. Bell. I didn't do anything. No, no, Arnie, I'm not blaming you. I just need to know if you have your cell phone handy. No, it's in your office being charged. Uh, my cell phone is in my office being charged. Well, it was. Yours was down to 25%. Mine was down to 15%, so my phone had priority, so I unplugged your phone and plugged my phone in. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Brad! What? Do you have your cell phone with you? I don't know. I can't see. I'm going blind. Brad, where do you usually keep your cell phone? In my jacket pocket. Are you wearing your jacket? Why are you concerned about my clothing in this time of crisis? Put your hand in your jacket pocket and pull out your phone. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, I've got it. Who do you want me to call? I don't want you to call anybody. Turn on the flashlight. I don't have a flashlight. The flashlight on your phone. My phone has a flashlight? Yes, it lights up on the back of your phone. Oh, that bright light on the back of my phone. Yes. That's a flashlight? Yes, Brad. It's not just a light telling me my phone is functioning correctly? No. Oh. Are you telling me you keep that light on all the time? Well, I did until it started keeping me up at night, so I paid it over it. Well, this is just fine. Nobody's got a flashlight. Hey, Brad, why don't you turn on your phone and use the glow from the main screen to see your way around? I'd love to, but my battery's dead. It doesn't seem to last very long. That's because you keep the light on all the time. Anybody know where a phone charger is? There's one in my office. Take it over, Brad. There's a line. Well, let me see if I can make my way out into the lobby here. No, Brad, don't do that. (laughs) What the heck was that? You stepped on one of the sensors of our new security system. It yelled at me. No, that was the second of four audio alarms it does. Oh, I want to see this. No, don't go into the lobby. (laughs) B. So that's the third of four audio alarms, hey guys? Yes, every time you step on one of those sensors. <laughs> My bad, I'll stand still. <sighs> that's number four. What happens the fifth time somebody steps on one of these things? The person gets an electrical shock. You're kidding. No, it's true. Hey, Brad, come here. Okay, I'll just... Do- oh, oh, oh. What was that? That's the electrical shock I was telling you about. So if we try to walk and step on one of those... <laughs> 
Wow, that's annoying. So everybody just stand where you are until I figure this out. Can't we call for help? Brad, none of us has a working cell phone. How about if we use the phone in the receptionist's desk? We can... <gasps> oh, yeah, right, the security thing. I remember playing hopscotch as a kid. What? Hopscotch? Yeah, onesies. <laughs> twosies. <laughs> Hey, Brad, if you want a free prize, come over here. Oh, boy, I want a free... <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Guys, guys, this isn't a game. You're just saying that because I'm winning. Look, we got to figure this out. Who is closest to my office door? I think that would be me, Miss Bell. Do you think you can make it there in the dark in four steps or less? I think I can do that, Miss Bell. All right, Arnie, give it a shot. Good luck. One, two, three, four... <laughs> We're still kind of far away. Brad, come give me a hand. Okay, I'll just... <laughs> That's so much fun. Arnie, can you reach my office or not? Oh, I reached on the third step, Mr. Bell. <laughs> okay, grab one of the cell phones and turn on the flashlight. I have a better idea, Mr. Bell. Oh, what's that? I can open up one of these phones and rewire it so I can create a Bluetooth sequence reschedulator. It uses green tooth, Arnie. Oh, so they're not harming the planet. Okay, I can make it a green to sequence reschedule. Fine, fine, fine. Just just do it, Arnie. Okay, okay. I see I pop open your phone like this. I scramble the refabulator. Reset the confo belongingator. Pull out the hiska waka 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 uh, Arnie, isn't all that tampering going to ruin your cell phone? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not doing it to my cell phone. Well, all right, then. Hey, wait a minute. There, that should do it. Arnie. No, by just manipulating this a little bit, I can change the sequence of events. Can you remove, like, the electrical shocking one? Oh, I can remove any of them, Mr. Bell. Then do it. All right, all right. Okay, John. So we can step on them now? Yeah, I'll show you. Hey, Brad, take two steps forward. All righty. Okay, there's the first alarm. I'll take another step and... See, told you. I took out the second, third, and fourth alarms. Arnie, can't you take the electrical shock out of the sequence? Oh, well, now I can, yeah. That's it. Put up your dukes. Oh, you want to fight? How you want to fight already? Guys, guys. Yeah. I fought like a butterfly. And I sting like a cattle prod. Keep talking so I can find you. Both of you stop moving around. Arnie, fix this thing. Okay, it's perfectly safe. Fine, let me come out. Whoops, wait a minute. He did that on purpose again. I'm gonna go. Okay, little problem here. Let me just take this to my lab and. Arnie, you've turned off everything except the electrical shock. I can fix it. I can fix it. Whoops, I can't fix it. Why not? The electrical shock sorted out the entire phone. You destroyed the phone? It's okay, it's okay. It's not my phone. Are you saying we have to stand in place until somebody comes and rescues us? No! Why is that? You did a good job of saying it. Why you want... No, 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 no. All right, all right, everybody, just don't move until someone happens to come down here for some reason. Well, this is just dandy. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to lay down here. No, 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 no. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Well, I guess we're in for a bit of a wait. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that that just came in? It's me, Hugo the Janitor. One of your recurring when it's convenient characters. Hugo, don't come in. What happened to the light? Hugo, don't walk across the floor. He's walking across the floor. How are you doing that? I just put one foot in front of the other and push my broom across the floor. Push your broom? What are these paper plates all over the floor? Yes, yes, push them all into the corner, the farthest corner you can find. I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Why don't you turn on the emergency lights? We have emergency lights? Yeah, they run off big batteries. Well, where's the switch? No switch. I installed the clapper. Clap on. We, we can, can see. see. Clap off. Clap them back on. Clap them back, back on. on. Oh. oh, how long have everybody been just standing around like that? A couple of minutes, maybe. A couple of hours. What day is it? We've lost track. Well, everything's stacked up in the corner there. I'll go about my business. Good luck. Well, there they are, all the sensors that caused us all this trouble. They look like paper plates. Don't say so. Hey, hey, look on the other side of the stack there. What? What? I see a ten dollar bill. Ooh, let me climb over the stack and then You've been listening to Bells in the Battery, episode two hundred twenty-three, copyright twenty nineteen by John Bell Creative LLC.
Hey, look, my cell phone's fully charged now. Once upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered weak and weary, why I was so bored down to my core, when suddenly my ears detected a miracle so unexpected. T'was the mutual audio network, and what's more, my imagination was lifted with incredible stories I was gifted, an unlimited variety of audio lore, science fiction and mysteries, sweeping sagas and histories, tales of love and quests and total war. Even stories that made me chortle came from this magic portal. Quoth my raving, I want more. MutualAudioNetwork.com Listen and imagine together forevermore.